internet, my name is Hazel from Hazel Nutty Games. It's almost Saturday, so welcome to vlog time. This week, I had a chance to try out a feature of patch 6.0.2 that I didn't have a chance to, to try out and talk about last week. So, this all started, I was on the Timeless Isle, I don't know why, and I, people were just, you know, LF one more frog group looking for frogs, oh god, the frogs, and I was like, why? I mean, I'd known that people farmed frogs and had frog groups for a while, but I never really understood, and I was never curious enough to go, like, look it up, and I was, and I was curious, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna find a frog group and we're gonna kill some frogs, and I did that, <laughs> and apparently, People kill frogs because the frogs give you lesser charms of good fortune, like candy. They also spit out excessive amounts of timeless coins if you're looking for those. But the big draw right now especially is um, the lesser, lesser charms of good fortune because you can use those for basically unlimited Warforged seals right now as well as item upgrades. And you need a lot of them for item upgrades. It's 200 lesser charms to fully upgrade one piece of loot. So I see why people are farming them. Um, I tried it out, and apparently you get lesser charms very quickly. It doesn't take very long at all to get enough for, like, um, 12, 12 Warforged Seals or 14 of them or whatever will get you a full run of Siege of Orgrimmar where you roll on every boss. And uh, you can upgrade all your stuff without spending too much time there, assuming that you find a good group that can tag things. So that was kind of fun, and I did that, and I got my gear kind of upgraded, and I noticed that my item level on my Priest, who is my main as much as I can have one, um, it was getting up a little bit, a little bit. I was like 535 or something like that, which isn't a whole lot, but it's as high as I've ever gotten because I keep getting to Raid Finder and then moving on to a different character. And I was like, you know what? I'm, this group finder thing works so well for getting new frog groups, I'm just gonna try out and see if I can get a normal group, which is the old flex. I have a really hard time remembering to call it normal and not flex, because doing it, it doesn't seem like normal. It's pretty easy. I'm hoping that's just because Siege of Orgrimmar has been pretty nerfed at this point. But anyways, I decided to try and get a normal group, and I did. And I did Siege of Orgrimmar front to back on normal. Flex, normal. And uh, rolled on every single boss, and I got some gear and upgraded it all, and I was actually really happy with that. I also, big reason for doing it is, of course, to get the heirloom weapon. I'd kind of given up on getting heirlooms off Garrosh. I know they were a guaranteed drop, but I figured I would never find a group. But this new group finder tool is so wonderful that it's actually really easy to find groups. Um, even as a DPS, I'm sure it'll be even easier as a healer or a tank if I end up going through on my alts. Um, when I did get this heirloom, though, I was really hoping for the staff, and it gave me the one-handed mace. Which means I need to find an offhand, and ugh. <laughs> so, my plan now, having seen how easy it is to get characters in enough gear to get a decent group for normal, um, assuming that I didn't just get really lucky, um, I think I'm going to try and take some of my other alts through. I've got a Resto Shaman and a Resto Druid and a Warlock, and ideally, if I can manage it, I'd like to squeak all of them through normal and see if I can maybe get that heirloom staff so that I have it. I think that'd be really cool. So having a lot of fun with that, <laughs> spending plenty of times killing frogs and all the characters and uh, all that. In game also, Hallow's End is now live. It has been live for a whole week. It went live last Saturday. Um, and there is some new stuff this year, shockingly enough. Uh, for anybody that's given up on Hallow's End because, you know, you've got your purple proto drake, you've done all the achievements, you got your titles and you're, you're done. This year, you may be interested in the two new pets. There is Cursed Berman and Widget the Departed. They are adorable little uh, ghost kitties. Uh, they're little ghost cat pets, and they're 150 tricky treats each. Um, what I did was I just uh, went and grabbed a whole bunch of the tricky treats from pumpkins, just flew all over the place trick-or-treating um, on two different characters and got 150 treats on each, turned them in for pets, and I'm good. There is a toy item, the Wicker, Wicker Man. It's a little campfire, but it looks like a Wicker Man. And it'll go in your toy box. That's also available for 150 Tricky Treats. And I think it's new, but maybe it was always available and just now it's a toy. In any case, I don't have it and I'm still looking to get that because you know collections. <laughs> so that's that. Um, in cat news, I made my cat a box house. Um, this is the box that was formerly on my floor as a stepping jump up to the bed. The cat can now jump onto the bed all by herself with a flying tiger leap. She's quite acrobatic. So I decided to convert the box into a cat box by, you know, carving some holes in the side so she can actually get into it. Uh, there's two holes on it, and she loves hanging out in there, especially if um, it's on top of that red blanket that it's on right now. It's a fleece blanket, and she just snuggles up in there and just purrs, like, all by herself in a box. It's a little bit strange. I'm pretty sure she's in there right now. Um, so yes, cat box success. I was disappointed after I did it. I realized that I'd missed a great opportunity if I'd done it on a box that didn't have stuff printed on it, which I have. I have a box in my living room that is plain and not with stuff printed on it. If I had made the holes in that, 
made them a little nicer, maybe with like a knife instead of like hacking with kitchen scissors. And then like getting some markers. I could have drawn windows. I could have drawn curtains. I could have made little flower pots with like flowers. I could have made a home instead of just a house. So big opportunity miss there. I kind of want to do it anyways on the other box, but it's really hard to cut through corrugated cardboard and I'm lazy. So we'll see about that. As far as the beta goes this week, I put out a video. Shocking, I know. Um, we did the Wild Pets of Shadow Moon Valley. I want to get videos like that covering the wild pets available in each zone for all of those zones, hopefully before Draenor, because those are all the things you're going to be looking for once Draenor comes out if you want to get the Draenor Safari achievement, which will give you a royal peacock pet, which is super cute. You want it. Believe me, you want it. So hopefully I'll get all of those out. These videos will not cover other pets available in those zones specifically. There's a lot of rare mobs running around in Draenor that drop pets. I will do separate videos for all of those. Not sure when. There's a lot of, there's a big stack of video list stuff and they all take a lot longer than I think. I'll like pick a video and be like, this will take me a day. And then like nine hours later, I'm still collecting stuff. And I'm like, uh, this is only two minutes of video, but I'm working on it. I promise. So, and um, that's happening. I would love to tell you about other games I've played this week or other things that have been going on, but I like, I'm, I'm having too much fun in WoW. Every now and then I'll just get into a phase where I just, I play a lot of WoW, I have an absolute blast with it, I'm really excited about everything going on in it, and I don't really feel like doing anything else because everything in WoW is just too, too, too much fun. <laughs> I have all these alts and I want to do all these things in all of them, and, uh, and I'm enjoying myself. So eventually this phase will pass and I'll start to be interested in other things, hopefully in time for... Um, Lords of the F Bloodborne, if not Lords of the Fallen, but we'll, uh, we'll see for now. I am enjoying myself quite a bit and having a lot of fun on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday streams. I'm mostly just playing WoW and hanging out with you guys, so that's been great. Those start at 4 p.m. Pacific time, which is 7 p.m. Eastern time, and then sometime in the middle of the goddamn night for you crazy Europeans that decided to wake up for it anyways. So, um, questions. Skaterbun wants to know, of all the abilities they got pruned for all the classes with 6.0, are there any you miss, any you'd bring back, and anything you think that should have been removed but didn't? So, that's a really big question. Um, it's totally valid. And I'm probably going to make some people mad because obviously everybody will have specific opinions on this. There's not really a whole lot that I missed, to be honest. A lot of, I was somebody that was... Because I play a lot of classes casually, as opposed to getting really good at any given one, a lot of those finicky littler buttons that you would use like once in once in a moon, um, they, I, they annoyed me that they existed and that they were taking up space on my bars. And you know, I so I was really happy about most of the pruning. Something that I miss, I thought symbiosis was a really cool ability. Um, not so much as a non-druid. As a non-druid, I never really thought about it, and then whenever I got it, I was like, oh, look at this cool thing that I'm not going to use because I don't have a spot on my bar for it. But as a druid, I thought it was really neat, and I do miss it a little bit. However, I don't know if I would bring it back because it does unnecessarily complicate things for a lot of other classes. I mean, it's, it's a great mechanic, and I think for high-end rating and people that are really on top of all of their everything, it's a cool thing, and it's sad that it's gone. But for the average person like me, it's... It's just going to confuse my tiny little brain. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, and you'd bring back... I would bring back Serpent Sting. Um, Serpent Sting obviously still in the game for survival hunters. I don't think it's a button. I think it's tied into your arcane shot. But now that BM hunters and Marks hunters don't have it, I have this glaring hole in my bar. And I don't know what to put in. I don't have any buttons left. <laughs> I'm playing a... I'm leveling a BM hunter right now. And a lot of the things that you get... Two major things that you get um, from talents are... Uh, the Glaive Throw and Murder of Crows are both pretty good right now, and those are both kind of rotational. So when you're leveling, you just got, like, Arcane Shot, Steady Shot, and Kill Command. And, and that's kind of it. <laughs> so, um, I'm sure my Hunter situation will get better once I get that one up to max level, but until then, she's kind of bored. So I would bring back Serpent Sting. I see why it's gone, and it's, it's fine, but was it that bad for us to have a dot that we can apply? <laughs> um, anything you think should have been removed that didn't? I'm not going to get too much into this because there's quite a few things actually that I ended up logging into different characters and seeing why is this still here? I never use this and uh, just being generally surprised by that. Um, but I'm all right with all of it staying because it's a, not everything has to be on my bar. Some things can just hide in my spell book and I can forget about them. Should have been removed but didn't. I think, and this is personal opinion and, and it's 
it, it's probably not a, the right one, but I think that druids, if your spec is balance or resto, I think, I don't think you should have access to things like rip and maul and claw and bite and whatever. Um, you do, it's, I don't, I never end up using them. They take up a lot of room in my spell book and I feel pressured that what if there is this magical situation where I need to use them? I should have them set up. And it's, it's just, it's, it's something that feels unnecessary that I wish wasn't there. I do think, of course, you should still have access to the forms. I think it's nice to be able to shift into cat form for the passive speed boost, um, or into bear form if there's like an emergency and you need some extra health. I think that's a, that's fine. But I don't think you need all of the abilities or any of the abilities that go inside of those forms, unless you're specced into guardian or feral. Um, that is personal opinion and should not be taken by anybody really, but I don't know. That's, that's just how I feel. Percane or Persane wants to know, what is your husband's name and what does he look like? Well, um, his handle, he goes online by Psych, P-S-Y-C-H, and he looks like, um, really haven't seen him before? He appears in the cat video in the kitty vlog. He also appears in the dog video, the one where my clique is trying to howl. So if you search for kitty, vlog, K-I-T-T-E-H, kitty vlog, or um, Klikai Hazel Nutty Games, you'll probably find either one of those videos he is in them, um, much to his dismay. <laughs> uh, Willie Lee wants to know, which are your favorite pets from all of the different pet families? Um, as far as repeat questions go, I'm not worried about it, as long as they're not like consecutive weeks. I forget things like a goldfish, so uh, I don't expect any of you to remember what I answered like a year ago. Um, and also my answers on stuff like this may end up changing. So favorite pet is really hard. Um, I have 557 unique pets and that's not actually that many. Um, a lot of people that are super into pet collecting that have gotten like almost everything will at this point have over, over 600, like in the 612, 620 range. I have 557 and I'd say like 70% of those are really damn cute. So... It's rough. On any given character, I'll have two or three different pets on a hot bar. Um, not hot key, just on a bar on the side. Um, depending on the race and class and sort of story that I have in my head for that character, I'll have a couple different pets that fit with that theme and then I'll use those on that character. For a pet that I have out more than anything else, I would say uh, Chi Chi. Um, this is kind of falling here. Chi Chi, Hatchling of Chi Chi, is uh, one of the Celestial Tournament pets. I love it. It's like a little... A little pretty cute gold birdie, and it's got like a little gold light, and it's got a little red. Ah, I love it. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, microphone. It's okay. Yeah, Chi Chi's really cute, but if I have to pick like a favorite, and I don't really have them out that much anymore, but if I had to pick a favorite, I would say the Green Wing Macaw from Dead Mines, because he's just, he's always going to be number one in my heart. He was my first pet from Dead Mines. He, he's the pair of the draws from Dead Mines, and I got him back on like my first character when I had no idea what I was doing in WoW. Didn't know anything about pets. Didn't know anything about drop chances. Didn't know that he was really common. I got it and I was like, man, this is rare. And it came to me and I could sell it, but no, this is gonna be my best friend once I found out what it was. And that parrot was my best friend for like a year. And every time I pull him out, I have like feelings. I can, I, I get like the memory and like that mental flavor of like being 16 again and playing WoW well after school. And uh, green wing my call, you're my, you're my favorite. So that has been my week. If you have any questions you would like answered on a Saturday vlog, gee, microphone, you're like floppy today. If you have any questions, leave them as a comment on the most recent vlog or send me an email or send me a YouTube message. Any of them are fine. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day.